A lot of people have often asked me, Rodney, how are medical devices developed? I saw this new device in my doctor's office this morning, but I don't really see where it's come from. And all this documentation you talk about that's required to get them to market, how is it all done? So basically, all the steps I mentioned today cover all those documents in the most simplified way possible. Welcome to MedTech 101 a podcast where we discuss matters around medical technology and pharmaceutical drugs in a way that almost anyone can understand. And this is to help you understand some of those fancy medical devices you see in the doctor's office and also to discuss some of the hottest topics around this space. From time to time, we'll bring some interesting guest speakers on this podcast to hear some of the work they're doing around medical technology. My name is Rodney Moses. I'm a biomedical engineer who has a published patent for a medical device that's going to help the lives of thousands of chemotherapy patients. I've spent my entire working career in research and development for medical technology, working on cool devices that are still yet to hit the market, orthopedic implants, and the classics such as asthma inhalers. I've worked for one of the biggest med tech companies in the world, Johnson & Johnson, among several others. I really love med tech. It's part of my life, so I hope you guys will get to enjoy some of the points we're going to be bringing on this podcast. And if you'd like to reach out on LinkedIn or on Instagram or any of the other social media platforms, please look at the description below. That's where the links are. And yeah, so getting straight to it then. Today we're going to be talking about how medical devices are developed from simply starting with the idea all the way and to it's on the market in a very simplified way. And I've created just a summarized five steps you need to have or you need to do to do this. And before we start looking at the list of the five steps I've created, the biggest step of all this is actually creating the idea because ideation is the most difficult part of any process but once you have the idea of what you want then it's just straightforward from there and you basically will need to know there's five steps i'm going to be covering today step number one the lab and the reason why i call it the lab is because that's where the idea or the working principle is firstly tested on either cells or animals and these are called animal models so what happens here is you take the machine and its working principle test it on a small group of cells which you intend to make it work on once it's inside the body and see if as to how the cells will behave there and then if that's okay then you basically test the machine on animals and this makes sense because you don't want to just jump straight into the human because then there's a huge risk, a huge liability that comes across with that. So it's quite important to first start on cells and animals. Step number two, safety. Why is safety important? I mean, if if you're going to be working with human beings, it's important for you to establish that this medical device or that technology is going to be safe in humans. Yes, we get the confidence from the animal models and, you know, the tests we've done on cells, but we need to know how it will work with human beings. So for step number two, what needs to happen is they basically test for things like, is this safe? What are the side effects? And how does it work with the body? Because we have to understand, we have to treat the body as a holistic system. And it's important for us to know that. And to actually see if the machine is actually working. And also in this step, one thing that's also established is what are the side effects of using this machine? What's the dosage or what's the duration should this machine be used by a human being without 
creating complications. Then we move on to step three, effectiveness testing. Why is it important to check the effectiveness of a device? Well, this is just basically a build up upon the previous step where we looked at safety. So here we look further to see, okay, is it safe? And one way of doing this, they basically increase the number of people using that machine, right? And by increasing the number of people using that machine, you will get the data. You see, okay, fine, the machine is working here. We've increased the number of people who particularly need this machine or medical device. And yeah, it's correct. It's working fine. And then is it also working in a way that there might be any side effects that we didn't pick up in the first round when we did it, which was technically step two. But step three basically is there to add numbers, you know, sort of, sort of like solidify this confidence in this device before we even get it to the market. Step four the gold standard. And when I talk about the gold standard, I'm not referring to the economic term for gold standard. We're not talking about gold here. But what what I'm referring to is in this step, the machine is basically checked against other current medical devices on the market to see if it's better. Because obviously, the last thing you want is to bring a medical device that's going to be detrimental or not give any advantage in comparison to what you already have. So it's important that whatever new medical device that's been trying to push to reach the market has the efficacy or it works well, it works better than what's already on the market. Not only for business terms to have that economic advantage, but it also helps cement that if what we had on the market was really this safe, then surely this new medical device we're bringing that's better is going to be safer. And if you pass this one, that's how the the medical device basically gets to the market. And obviously, a lot of people would like to say, yeah, it's probably not that simple to reach the actual market. And I agree with that because different countries will have different sort of like durations as to how long they take the to process the papers and also it also depends on the classification of the medical device and we'll touch on the classification of medical devices as to how is that process done a little bit later on but now you've passed this four steps to get on the market so yay you know we're happy we have the medical device on the market but that's not enough to keep it there to keep the medical device on the market we need to do another step and that's the fifth step which i'm going to be talking about step five long-term analysis what do i mean by long-term analysis of a medical device what i mean is the follow-up you know to see how is that medical device performing once it's on the market because now once it's on the market to keep it there you have to meet the audit requirements or the regulatory requirements or the law of that government or that particular geographical location. And this step basically helps to cement that, you know, that there isn't any side effects that are happening long term because sometimes when a medical device is tested, there's not enough time to see how it will perform maybe after 10 years. And this is the point of this step. And and these are basically the five steps simplified as to how do you take a medical device from a concept all the way to the market. Now, going back on the topic of medical device classification, why do we class medical devices? Because sometimes you hear there's class one, class two, class three. Sometimes if you're in Europe, you'd hear class 2A, class 2B. What does that all mean? This basically just shows the level of risk involved with that particular medical device. Because obviously a thermometer cannot have the same level of risk as an MRI scan. So to do this classification, there's a bunch of rules in the medical device regulatory document, let's say that way. And For Europe, there's like 22 rules, which are very simple. You go through those rules. It's yes or no answers. 
Does your medical device do this? Does it do this? Is it invasive? Does it do that? And as you fill this in, you basically end up with the classification for that medical device. So it's quite straightforward in how it's done. And as you can see, this is the sort of like the fundamental steps that are required for medical devices to get to the market for for any geographical location. However, if you start looking into the specifics, you realize that the requirements for the US, for Europe, for Japan will vary depending on the medical device. Different markets, different rules, and some markets are more strict than others. But this sheds some light on the differences in how medical technology is developed in comparison to other technologies, for instance, simply due to the high regulatory requirements in this particular sector. Because we're working with humans, it's important that they come first. We don't want to cause harm. As they like to say, the benefits that comes from the medical device should outweigh the risks involved in using that medical device.